This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 36. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak. We are proud members of the Comics Podcast Network. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Jamie D. I'm Alex Smotis. I'm Peter Rios. <laughs> Throwing professionalism right, right out, out the, the window. <laughs> we are sexy bitches, yeah! <laughs> that was a... We, we left you in suspense there. Who's well, next? Who's here? Who's here? Who's here? <laughs> You're waiting for... I'm Frank Miller. <laughs> and all you oh. got was Alex Simotis. Yes. What a letdown. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to our show. Our 36th episode here. Uh, today, uh, the focus of our show is going to be independent comics. We have had some emails from people saying, you know, hey, you don't talk enough about independence. And even though we talk mostly about DC and Marvel, we are here to prove today that we do read independent comics. Yep. Or at least we did read independent comics back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. No, I still do. It's, that's one I've, I've always liked the diversity. I've always... You know, since I got seriously like back women. in, oh yes. <laughs> uh, since I stop got offending s- our female audience, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All yeah, three of them. I'm sorry, <laughs> Catherine and uh, Lena and who's the other one? I forget. <laughs> I'd like to imagine there are more out there just <laughs> there listening are. to my voice. But uh, no, after I seriously got back into comics, um, I just you know I discovered some uh, different ones that were out there. Um, there was an artist who actually lives in our area uh, by the name of Tim Truman, who was doing some really good stuff uh, for uh, a now-defunct comic company called Eclipse. Uh, He was doing um, Scout. He was drawing um, Grimjack with uh, John Ostrander, which actually is now making a comeback with IDW. Um, And uh, he was also doing Airboy. So from there, I kind of got into the Eclipse universe, got a couple of those, and found some of the, you know, of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and everybody. Hey, you're jumping those. the gun here. So, okay, well, <laughs> excuse me. You're mentioning me. half my friggin' list here. <laughs> well, then you can just chime in. I just... I'm just going to... Oh, are we going... <laughs> just, hey, wait, 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 I just wait, 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 turned wait, off wait, his mic. Everybody wants to hear me. Are we? Because we're probably not going to go right into it, right? We're right, do right. some other things first. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just... Oh, okay. okay, I was just kind of vamping here until somebody <laughs> yeah. took the microphone away from me. <laughs> Jeez. But, uh, we no, let him on. He becomes the, the shiznit, shiznit pimp, pimp. <laughs> and he thinks that's he owns right. the show. Hey, keep this is my house, God damn it! <laughs> keep oh, him up, pimp and strong. By the way, we're not in the basement. We're actually in uh, a very nice office. That's right. That, it's know, actually like redone. Yeah. We spent a lot of money on custom cabinetry in this office. It's very high tech. Just because somebody thought we were in the basement, or just yeah. you know. Well, I think I said that, or I said we were in our bedroom, or something. It was a total oh, lie. I just in said your it. Bedroom. It, it came off. It was the first thing that's that rolled sick. off my tongue. I'm like, that's not true. What did I? Why am I lying? We're actually all under the covers right now. Shut that's up. a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. I got the lava Tasha's lamp massaging going. Her feet. I got the lava lamp going in the corner with the Barry White on. Oh, did you hear Ooh, Luther yeah. Vandross died? Yes. Yep. Poor man. Yeah. Fifty something. Fifty some. Yeah. Poor guy. Couldn't name a single one. Of I, I'm trying to think, and I can't even. <laughs> All I know is from Philly, and he wrote like love songs. So with my love life, I didn't listen to a lot. I didn't listen to a lot of Luther Vandross. So sorry. Okay. But anyway, now that I wow, was we off covered my a lot right there. <laughs> Holy Hannah! And that was our episode. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening, <laughs> and we're out of here. Drive safely. I'm going to go into a few uh, listener emails because we have so so many of them to do. Um, let's see here. I have to uncheck something in there, right? Okay. Wow. Here's one from Khaled Abu Alfa. So that's a mouthful there. We'll just... From Jersey. Khaled. (laughs) I think he's on the forum. I think so, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, He says, hi, guys. Just wanted to thank you for your excellent show. I've written about it on my blog, and it's a doozy here. I think we'll just... Put Post a link it to it in the show yeah. notes okay. because it's a hell of a URL here. Well, make sure you send that to me. Yeah, brokencode.com slash archive slash solaris dash comics. It's, yeah. Okay. Keep up the great work. In the meanwhile, I'm going to be thinking up some questions for Peter. Uh, 
tell me, tell me you ship to the UK. Oh, so he must be from the UK. Uh, that means if he if he stumps you, yes. Mm-hmm. If you yeah, are sure. in the UK and you stump the Rios, I will send you the prize. I'll probably send it by the cheapest thing possible. I will hire a guy named Pedro who will hand carry it there. <laughs> it could take six to eight months. So I'll swim. <laughs> That's right. the Atlantic Ocean. No, he's going the long way around across oh, the Bering okay. Sea and all the way across you will Trans- the Magellan's Soviet. Yes. Trail. If you're if you're you know if you're not in the U.S., I'll pitch in. I'll help out so we can send it airmail. He says, I doubt I can stump him as I thought I was a comic geek, but Peter is the uber geek in the best possible way, of course. Woo-hoo. Take it easy, Khaled. Is that, oh. th- that's the guy who's all things Superman, right? Who was on the, is he the guy that was all things Superman? Oh, he know. might be. Maybe. Yeah. Because I was thinking it was the Khaled. I, thought, I yeah. can't remember him now. Uh, and here's another one from Panelologist. I think he sent us an email before. He mm-hmm. says, Hey, guys, I love the show. You're doing great stuff. Please don't ever stop. We don't plan on it. Regarding the query about where you had seen Lone Wolf, Wo- <laughs> Lone Wolf and Cub, Lone Wolf and Cub just walking around. In the- See, the problem is he, he didn't put Lone. He just put Wolf and Cub. And so, oh, so in your I'm mind, trying to you're say trying the to, L right. word, and then I'm seeing Wolf, and I'm like, what the hell? There's- so that's the guy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Shut up. I'm turning your microphone off again in a minute. <laughs> I'm leaving you here. You're not going to San Diego with us. <laughs> you bet. Well, I'll take his ticket. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, I think you are recalling the cross-gen comic called The Path. Uh, I recently read the first trade, and they had the and about the third or fourth issue in the action just completely stopped, so that Lone Wolf and Cub uh, could walk past. Yep. I do remember that. I remember that now that you say that. And maybe that's what I was thinking, but I thought it was more recent than that. But I really don't have any idea. So, you know, whatever. But that's a good. That's a good suggestion. It's it's quite possibly where I did see it, and we just got another email while we're sitting here. So that's uh, that's awesome. Let me. I, I just totally lost my train of thought because. <laughs> okay, can I go back to talk about the Pentagon? No, you? absolutely crap. not. <laughs> Don't ask again. Hell damn fart. <laughs> poop crap poop. Let me. Uh, damn it! I keep clicking the wrong thing. I'm getting all discombobulated here. Uh, here we go. Here's one from Abe Killian. He says, hi, guys. Just listening to my first episode of your show, episode number 33. Okay, so I caught on late uh, and loving it. My friend Pete and I have been doing a weekly radio show at Sydney's largest public broadcaster for about the past eight years, which covers sci-fi, books, comics, and pop culture with a similar style of banter. Yes, we too lament the current state of mainstream comics. I'm personally not a superhero guy. I much prefer Jim Mahfoud's work on 40 Ounce. Is, is it 40 Oz or 40 Ounce? I guess it's 40 <coughs> Ounce. Uh, the New Infantry, which is fading rapidly. And much to my surprise, I'm loving the newish G.I. Joe run. Having been an old school G.I. Joe guy, this run has been mostly pretty good. On your topic of runs, I'd like to add the 2001 Keith Giffen Paco Medina run on Suicide Squad. Ultimately axed as themes began to infringe too closely to the Patriot Act for DC, I assume. At the time, I was a manager of one of Sydney's biggest comic shops, and I was getting people on board, but too late. Love the run, love the irreverent, and more than a little anti-establishment tone to it. But that was one of my one and only forays into superhero comicton, well apart from Ramos, Peter Parker, and Spectacular Spider-Man, but that was for the art. This list of superhero comics is getting longer. Peter David's Hulk? Oh shit, I'll stop now. Uh, Danger Girl doesn't count. <laughs> also on the runs thread, Mark Bright, M.D. Bright on G.I. Joe, brought the penciling out of the 80s and into the 90s. Awesome job, as he also did on Quantum and Woody. Very underrated comic, in my opinion. By the way, is Cable Deadpool getting worse, or is it just me? <laughs> Love Deadpool, but really. Anyway, not tons to say, just saying hello and enjoying the show. Have fun, Abe. Well, thank you, Abe. He said Sydney, so it must mean Australia, right? Down yes. Down. Yeah. Well, and you know he's because when he said tons, it's T O N N E S. Oh, okay. Of, yeah. <laughs> or he just can't spell that. No, that's <laughs> but the, I, I that's you, the I, Queen's I, English there. I, I agree yeah. with him with the Jim Ma food stuff. I really, I, I like his stuff. Um, Girl Scouts. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff he's done. Oh, he did. Um, he did the Clerks comic. That's right. Yep. Um, and I, 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 he, I put him up there with uh, Evan Dorkin as far as uh, milk and cheese. Just that that kind Hectic of Planet. Yeah, that that kind of social commentary, uh, 
little itty bitty comic run, you mm-hmm. know, little you know four panels, uh, like in your newspaper type comic uh, strips. Book guy. Yep. See, we know what we talk about when we talk about indies. Yeah. We know indies too. All right. Here's a, one from Carrie Townsend. He said, I just finished listening to episode 33, and I really wanted to thank you so much for finally giving Marvel some props. I run a, I run a comic shop, and I get really sick of all the snobs out there ragging on Marvel and Bendis so much when they are actually putting out quality books. DC is really great now, and I am getting almost all of their stuff, but people keep ignoring all of the gems in the Marvel U. New Thunderbolts, Marvel Team-Up, New Avengers, Daredevil, Ultimate Fantastic Four... The last arc that Jenkins and Lee did, just especially, and Runaways are all amazing and people just don't seem to care. I try and try and try to push tons of the great stuff, but it keeps getting passed over for all these second and third printings of DC books and it gets frustrating. I really thank you guys for finally encouraging me to remember how great Marvel is these days. And by the way, Uncanny's newest arc is really good and finally fixing a lot of the crap that has happened in the past five years or so. And be on the lookout for new Excalibur that should really kick ass that wouldn't happen if not for the Mojo story arc. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about the Mojo story arc, but all I know is Mojo has not been good in the past, so maybe the crap of Mojo spawned something good. Like the 90s made comics good again, I don't know. Well, thank you, Carrie. I'm with you right there because I love Marvel, and I will hang on to the dearest end. Um, let's see, I think we got another one. Okay, here's another one. It's, it's just, I had to laugh. It's signed, your loyal listener, Spanky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Spanky. It says, hey, guys, I started listening to your show a couple weeks back, and I've been hooked ever since. I really like this, the casual discussions and the recommendations on your show, as well as the utterly obscure trivia. I got into comic books starting in the late 80s, reading mostly Marvel X-Books. Cable, back when Jeff Loeb wrote for it, and Batman Detective Comics. I just about stopped reading comics in the early to mid-90s. You talked a lot about it in episode 28, which puts which put things into perspective for me. I thought it was just me losing interest, and I hadn't realized things had gotten so out of hand. I haven't read much since then besides Watchmen and Sandman. To make a long story short, I'm embarrassed to say it wasn't until the excellent Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoons that my interest in comics has really rekindled. Both the animated Superman as well as Justice League Unlimited has done a great job of bringing the characters from the entire DC Universe and telling great stories with them. I'm basically caught up on Batman, but I was wondering what you guys would recommend to someone wanting to get started on the good, definitive uh, stories of the Justice League, JSA, Superman, Flash, Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman, or any others I should pick up. And don't worry, Crisis on Infinite Earths is at the top of my list. Well, Spanky... um, Peter, you just posted. Yep. Yeah. I just posted something on the forum because somebody asked that same question. Maybe it was even him. I'm not sure. Um, and I put on there uh, or like a list of origin traits for like a lot of the top characters for DC. He wants to know about DC, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I did some current trades of like if you want to catch up on stuff going on now. And then I did some other ones that are more like Elseworlds and alternate stories, but um, that form. So it's things like, you know, things we've always we've been mentioning, the George Perez Wonder Woman trades, Batman Year One, Man of Steel, Superman by Byrne, uh, JLA Year One, Green Lantern, Emerald Dawn. You could even do Green Lantern Rebirth now. That's coming out in a hardcover soon. Um, New Frontier, Kingdom Come, Golden Age, the JS, current JSA, the current Teen Titans, Outsiders, uh and some more so it's on the thread Lonely and Place we'll keep of Dying what's that Lonely Place of Dying yeah if you want to know about the new Robin that's yeah. a, yep that's a good one so I'll have to add that and we'll, well keep he, he said he, were, he was already caught up with Batman so he's looking for oh okay tomorrow. right my bad so we'll we'll keep bumping some of those lists I think up. maybe we should compile a list and, and add it to a permanent link on our blog a sticky uh, where it's uh, where anyone can go anytime and check it out because yep. we get a lot of requests for that and we I think we've covered about all of it now. We don't want to. Yeah. I don't remember which episode we talk about, so I can't say go yeah. listen to thirteen. You know, I don't. I don't it's remember. actually if you check that. There's a good thing. I know sometimes people get the get our show just downloaded to their computer or wherever. If you don't ever go to the blog, uh, the the actual blog site, we have all the show notes there, so you can actually go through the past episodes and not. You know, I'm sure it probably yeah. says a discussion on origin trades or or how to catch up on each universe. So 
definitely yeah. try to check that out. Because we've talked about it numerous times now, so yeah. I think it's all out there. Um, you said that the uh, Green Lantern Rebirth, Rebirth. Mm-hmm. hardcover is solicited, and it just made we were just talking before we started recording. I was going through, and, and uh, we use DCB service to buy all our comics from, and I'm, I'm ordering, I think, like seven or eight trades this month, and and all but one of them are 50% off. Wow. So I'm totally scoring big time this month. That's why we love them. Yes. <laughs> and, I, I mean, if you're a new listener, you've probably heard us talk about I, I, we. Are, they do not pay us to talk about them. We are just satisfied nope. customers. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there lest someone think that, you know, Every Just time I do that, think. it's going cha-ching, cha-ching. You know, no that's way. not the case. I'm going cha-ching because I'm saving a boatload of money. Heck yeah. Every six, six out of seven is 50% off. Um, it's awesome. Such a score. <laughs> All right. Now, Jamie, now we can talk about independent comics. But since you've said everything, now I'm going to go. No. <laughs> uh, Where the hell was I? Uh, yes. No, I was just talking about finding independent comics. And I've just – I've been there – since the you know the early '80s and off and on again, finding good stuff, trying you know, and unfortunately getting some of the bad stuff. Um, really bad. Uh, it really, I mean, you just like anything else, you just need to pick and choose. You need to find find what you like and go with it. There's just so much out there, and your better stores are the ones, at least as far as I'm concerned. And I love the store we go to, but it was always one of. When I was working there, it was one of our bones of contention with the owner uh, about independence and getting... And I understood where he was coming from because he didn't want to stock independence that heavily because, truthfully, they didn't sell. And he was right. But they didn't sell also because he didn't have them. So we couldn't develop an audience for them to show what was out there without you know, having the books. And that's, to me, I always can tell a half-decent store when I walk into it and I can see a half decent independent section, and there are plenty out there. I mean, I uh, I found a lot of them, and um, really, uh, there's something out there for everybody. I mean, just pick up a previews, look and look through what they have out there now. I mean, I can go through and tell you older stuff to look for at shows, and uh, we've already done it before. We told you right now the Valiant Universe, which was a fabulous universe of uh, superhero comics. And eventually went into others is out there where you can find in fifty cent boxes. Uh, Cross Gen Universe right now is available cheap at a lot of the shows I've seen. Um, like I like I said before, the Eclipse Universe, which I picked up, um, are starting to make a, a return in one of the bigger companies going right now. IDW they they do a lot of I had talked about this in another show. They do a lot of. Uh, CSI, they do uh, games like uh, uh, Metal Solid Gear, Castlevania. Metal they, Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid, whatever. <laughs> you can tell I, I'm into games. Um, uh, comics based on that, they just came out with an Angel comic, which picks up uh, after the uh, last episode of Angel, which I just read. It was okay. I was a little disappointed at what I got for three ninety nine, but then again, I didn't pay three ninety nine for it. I think I, I think I got the money. I got the I'm, I'm, price. I'm like loving that and hating it. I, I haven't read it yet, but I'm like, oh great, we can continue the Adventures of Angel. These bastards are gonna make me buy a book, mm-hmm. you know, because I want that show and I love the show. I want to know, and now I gotta buy a stinking another comic. Ugh. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, a lot of stuff I loved. Uh, that doesn't even take into account Fantagraphics, which puts out a lot of really good. Um, Eclectic, I'll say eclectic is the word because it, it's really to try to put them into a into a niche. Uh, you, uh, it's it's tough to put them into a, a niche. Uh, just what they put out. I mean, it's got you can go anywhere from from hell to um, you know just kids. You know, they, I think they put out the ne- little Nemo and Slumberland stuff. And they're putting out the peanuts, the yeah. collected peanuts, right? Yeah, they, they're putting out the collected peanuts. Oh, which really? Is, which is a fabulous. Excellent. They have three volumes out so far. I have all three of them, and they are gorgeous. If you love the peanuts, um, I would I highly highly suggest those. But I'm hogging up the the mic. Let let other <laughs> the people talk. I mean, well, that's, I, I made a list, and I'm just looking at it, and I'm thinking, what's the first? I was going to ask what what was your first? Yeah, that I read. Well, 
or like that you remember seeing on the shelf. Well, I, the like ones that. that stood out in my head when I was just getting into comics were um, some of the. Uh, well, I think it was uh, Kamiko. They had like the really or no continuity comics. They had their incredibly bright colors and stuff, and I remember going, "Whoa!" All the Neil Adams stuff. Yeah, it was some kind of cyber rad. That's not the one. It was some kind of chick with wings or something, or some kind of crazy. Angelique. Like, no. Something like that. Well, vamp. Ms. Mystic. Something vamp. Vamp. Something it wasn't Vampirella, but it was something like that. Cheap bat. <laughs> oh, something like that. Some, yeah, it was Valeria. Sort of like, Valeria. Yes, Valeria. that's yeah, it. That's, Valeria the that's it. Is. I had one of those ding, issues, ding, ding, ding. you know. I think that was like the first one I ever bought, the wow. first indie book that I ever bought. But the one that I really remember. Uh, the most was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it was before the cartoon and all that, and the movie and everything. It was just, well, I was only a teenager at the time, like, Ninja Turtles, n- mutants and ninjas, and oh my god, that's cool, you know? And, and actually, the book was all, it was pretty hardcore. Like, they, they, they were, they was not like the cartoon or the movie. They were killing people and slicing people up, and it wasn't all no, like Kawabunga dude. I was going to say, it wasn't made for kids. It was, right. not, it was not a, that was a property that they took. And made it for kids, but originally it definitely was not. Yeah, and I would recommend if you haven't read that, you can find the trade for the that collects the first like five or six issues or whatever. I think that's worth a read, especially to know some of the roots of independent mm-hmm. comics because it was. I a, agree. It was a good read. And then of course you had all the spinoffs: radioactive adolescent, black, black belt, belt hamsters, Boris the bear. There was kung um, fu kangaroo. Kung fu. Ca- I knew there was some more. I, um, I read one called Fish and Chicken. <laughs> Do you remember Fish Police? Oh yeah, that I wasn't had, a takeoff, but I had some was, issues of Fish Police yeah. as well. From Kamiko, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, and then that be- actually became a, a yeah. series for On a little TV, bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. wasn't Art Adams really? Didn't he do the artwork for that? Or no, 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 no it wasn't Art Adams. That was. Um, no, I remember that though. I bought all that shit because I was yeah. a kid, and it was like animals and stuff. That's cool. <laughs> Anthropomorphic. What is it? Anthropomorphic. The ter- oh, that sounds career. familiar. Giving animal, giving hum, animals human right, personality. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, that word you're looking human, for, yeah. right? Anthropomorph- Anthropomorphism. Bam. Uh, what else do I have on my list? Well, another one that's like that, but is stood the test of time and still continues to be fantastic is Usagi Yojimbo by Stan Sakai. Yep. That is a great, great book. Highly, rec- uh, highly recommend those. You can get those. Nice thing about those is you can get, you can get a trade, and you don't have to have read the five trades before it. He right. he writes the story so that, yeah, there's stuff that you'll understand more if you've read the earlier trades, but it's nothing that takes away from the story you get. Yeah. Because I've I've just gone and I've seen trades like cheap places and all you know, you know, when I mean cheap places, I mean they are cheap. The, right. you know, they're, they're they're selling them for half price or whatever, and I'll pick them up and I won't worry that I can't sit down and read them. I'll just sit down, and I will enjoy them from beginning to end. Another one that was. Uh from that same time period or, or around there was Mage. Matt Wagner. Matt Wagner was excellent. Mage, yeah. Grendel, one of my all-time favorite comic books. Yeah, I have a lot of Grendel comics. And that one, I have that every was, single one. The Comico Primer, that was the first one that was in? Mm-hmm, I have that. Actually, a friend of mine got it, got it for me for my birthday one year. Do you remember um, Elementals? Yes, Comico got those. And no, Cy... I was going to say Bill Willingham. If you, yeah. like, if you like Fables and you're enjoying Fables right now, Dig out, you know, go to a show and seek out Elementals because it's him earlier and just as good, just as good characterizations. Uh, f- a, f- a friend of mine, Dave uh, Harold, used to work at the shop, got me into those. He said he was like, "Here, read these." He said, mm-hmm. and there was a lot of stuff that he gave me that I, I, no, well, no, in all honesty, he was one of the guys who would who would get yeah, me, he, he give, me, me in, give me something, yeah. And I, usually it wasn't bad. He usually steered me the right way, and he definitely steered me the right he, way on he that one. He pointed me out uh, for a while. I was reading, was it uh, Stray Bullets, the Dave Laughing oh, book? Yeah. And I, that's still going, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I, I haven't I, read it for a long time, but it was cool for a while when I was reading it, and he pointed that one out to me as well. Yeah. Actually, I, I started him on that one. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah, it came full <laughs> circle. Then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You started me on that too, Jamie. Mm-hmm. Um, about uh, Elementals, uh, they're one of the first like, comic books that I remember reading that was that I could really could say it was like a mature read. I mean, yeah. it was very sophisticated. They dealt with social issues, AIDS, yep. drug addiction. Sex. Sex, suicide, a lot of things that, you know, the other comic book companies kind of would dwell on, but they would 
They, they just really gloss over it. Exactly. They wouldn't, they wouldn't delve into exactly. an issue. Yeah. And that's what attracted me to independent comics is you got more meat mm -hmm. for the money, more bang for the buck sometimes when you got books like well, They're willing to take a chance. They I mean, did. Yeah. And for a while there, that's where I thought independents were really like, I thought the key to the industry because mm -hmm. these were like the you know they were the pioneers they were it was the really they were the forefront of the industry when it came to storytelling. Mm -hmm. But um, the one that was really at the forefront of the whole independent movement was uh, Z. Uh, that <laughs> was the <laughs> that was uh, that was by <laughs> Keystone Comics. Oh, was Keystone it? Graphics? Graphics. Yeah. Graphics. Yeah. graphics. Yeah. Don't don't you forget. It was so good it disappeared. So fast, they just right. it, it's, it's they still broke the, the mold. It is still in the Overstreet Guide. That's is it really? Get the hell yeah, out. you go. You no get, way. You list everything. Z is there. I swear. That's awesome. awesome. For those of you who I was do not say, know, you tell them. Uh, and we have to do a whole episode about this. No, Maybe we don't. it should be like the next one <laughs> no, because it's a good story. Then we would have to have a certain someone on. No, here, I'll no. I'll just fill in the whole story. But uh, I Phil you Colin. need to you know what we need to, you know what we need to do. Like like the Crusaders episodes that we still need to put two more episodes or yeah. so or yeah, is put a page every now and then. If on I the scan block. it, in, I want to yeah. scan it in. I'm going to scan the whole thing and put You're it all put at it once. All? Otherwise, yeah. I'll delay like I did with right, the Crusaders. Right, right. But I actually um, published a comic uh, in like 1994, 95. Uh, it was and only ended up getting three issues out, and I was only involved in like two and a half of them. Uh, but it was called Z, and it was this you know vigilante guy from the future, and you know. But it was cool. Real originals. Yeah. Actually, the artwork was pretty good. Um, what's yeah, the astonishing? Guy did, the guy who did the artwork wasn't too bad for what it was. Yeah. What's astonishing is if you put an ad in CBG and say you're starting a company and you need artists, you get submissions out the wazoo, and uh, we were so surprised to see some good ones, and uh, so we ha we actually had good artwork. Now, some of the inking was less than pleasant, which I saw the original pencils, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, it's so gorgeous. And then you get the inks, and you go, oh, it ain't so gorgeous anymore. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Why did they do that? Yes, but, but it, was, it was cool. If you ever see a copy of Z in a 25-cent bin, just pick it up, and you know, it'll be fun. <laughs> Anybody read Zot? Yes. yes. I, I, I read the trades back. later, but I didn't mm -hmm. read it originally. That was kind of a fun yeah, Scott, mm -hmm. wacky kind of Scott McCloud, who yeah. went on to do Understanding Comics. Also, he did uh, the Adventures, uh, Further Adventures of Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. You guys remember that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a one shot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've talked about it before, but the classic is Cerebus. Yes, if I you, agree. If you haven't read Cerebus, you Grand need to. Granddaddy of them all. It will be an upcoming Book of the Month Club, I guarantee it. Yeah. Oh, okay. If I have my way. Talk about sure. continuity. Sure. Oh, yeah, 300 straight issues of continuity. Yeah, exactly. See, that's what, like, when we say, when I hear indie, I think black and white. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't normally think other superhero <laughs> comics that are also from smaller companies, even though those are independent. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess, right? I mean, I don't know what else yeah. to call them. Basically, to me, if it's not Marvel or DC, it's independent. Right. And I then mean, we have image, those hardcore independents. Image and, and, and Dark Horse have kind of grayed the lines a little, blurred the lines a little bit because they've gotten so big, mm -hmm. even though... Plus, they've had, like, creators... That have worked in Marvel and DC, so right. it's kind of hard. Especially to when Dark Horse had the whole Legends line when it was right. John Byrne, Frank Miller, and mm -hmm. all those guys. But, mm -hmm. but uh, Dark Horse used to be pretty independent in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, that's why they were called Dark Horse. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's one of the things actually I like about Image, and I you know give credit where credits due. When Jim Valentino took over as uh, editor of Image, he pretty much made Image a house where other creators could come with their product and get a publishing you know put themselves under a publishing umbrella of image and there was a lot of other independent books that may have gone by the wayside that got a chance at image so you know a lot of times when people bash image and say you know you know and they're basically no you know, kicking, the kicking rob liefeld in the groin um <laughs> you know you got to give credit where credit Where's is the due. line for that can i, yeah. can I get in that line <laughs> yes <laughs> Does it, does it sway your buying, though, at all? Because sometimes when I go to a, a store, I look at Image, and I know it's not an, a universe anymore, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But sometimes I don't even look at it because I, I get nervous, you know, because it's Image. No, but, it, it doesn't. It, it's Because I know they have good stuff coming mm -hmm. out. It's just, you know, I know um, Invincible's out from through through yeah. that, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, some, POV think, is a right? very popular one. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it, but it's, it's POV, right? That's what it's called? Yeah, your yeah. point of view. When so, I was when I was buying comics, um, and I would go through the image section, 
Yeah, the only thing I would stay away from was the the big names, you know, like the McFarlands, the the Larsons. What's, what's that like Greek one or whatever that you read or? Oh, or Age of Bronze. Age of Bronze. Yeah, yeah, it's about the the Trojan War. Um, yeah, that's, that's one was pretty much saved by image. Yes, I agree. I mean, if it if it didn't have an image banner on it, mm -hmm. no one would buy it. It didn't have like the backing, and then this way, like Jimmy said, it. It was it was a media darling. A lot of people would talk about it. Um, Show off. Kind of like the media same darling. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the same way, like with the goon. The goon was a was a, a very um, talked much talked about book, but it you know was coming out b uh, under its own banner, and it just you know, it was having a tough time. It was struggling, so it, it went under the DC. Ba uh, I mean, the Dark Horse banner. Boom! It's you know up for multiple Eisners. Everybody's talking about it. Eric Powell's going to have his own his own panel at the at the. Um, the San Diego Con, um, so I mean he's gone from that, and, and it was Eric Schenauer that does yes, Age, of, Age of Bronze. He, he I, th I really think he did the same way. He was pretty much bringing out the book himself, and then brought it under the the image uh, umbrella, and uh, and that was you know the rest is kind of semi history. Yeah, they they don't have to worry about publishing anymore. They can stick to storytelling yep. and promoting the book. Well, actually, they don't have to promote it because Image... No, Image has, will do that for them. Yeah, everything is done by Image. Yeah, it wasn't POV, it's PVP. PVP. That's what I was thinking of. Again, I haven't read it, I just yeah. know about it. Like, I'm flipping through the older uh, previews and, like, um, through the Image files, and Liberty Me Meadows is there now. Mm -hmm. Liberty Meadows, Frank yeah, Cho. Frank Cho. Um, Great stuff. I said Invincible. If you like uh, the old Bloom County, definitely pick up uh, Liberty Meadows because it's... It's the uh, bastard grandson of it. The one book that I read scattered issues of is Noble Causes by uh, Jay Farber. And um, let me try to get it here. Uh, art by Fran... Well, this one is by Art by Fran Bruno. Uh, bueno, sorry. And it's like a, a soap opera story in superheroes. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's like... Uh, there's this family called the Noble Family. And I read scattered issues, so I don't know quite what's going on. But there were some actually some really entertaining issues. Um, we, 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 <clears throat> pardon me. We talk about talk about this, and if you go back and listen to a couple, I guess it was a three or four podcasts ago, when I talked about my all time favorite runs, two of my all time favorite runs come out of independent comics. Uh, Strangers in Paradise. Mm -hmm. I love that book. Yeah, I, book. I have loved that book for years. Uh, and Bone, two you know two great great stories. Other there's another company I was just thinking of. Um, it's kind of gone. Uh, it's kind of condensed a little bit. I guess some of the, uh, the creators have gone away. But serious um, comics, uh, serious as in the Dog Star, um, they were Joseph publishing. Linzer. Yeah, they they were publishing Lisner stuff. Um, they also did. Um, I can't think of his name. Uh, Drew uh, Drew Haynes, uh, uh, Poison Elves, which is really some really nice artwork. Yeah, that was good. He has some really nice artwork. It's a, a mature. Again, a mature, not in adult sex stuff, but a mature-themed book, very, very well done. Uh, and then the exact opposite, you know, it's coming from the same company, uh, Akiko. Uh, if, especially if you're looking for a book for a kid, um, and you want to get like your younger child into a, into a comic book, I highly recommend anything Akiko. Mark, Mark Crilly. He hasn't come out. I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen a new book of his in at least two to three years. Um, and I really should. Sometime I'm on the net. I'd, rather than looking at the porn, I'm gonna go and get <laughs> find find his uh, his website and find out what's going on, why he hasn't put anything out. But it's it's worth the trades are out there. He actually did a couple prose books. Uh, they're in the kids book section uh, with his artwork. And it's just it's it's a ten year old Japanese girl who got taken away to another world, and she has to help them with a problem. And it's very Wizard of Oz ish, Lord of the Rings. She she has companions that she goes off with, has adventures, and it's a great book. It, it was it was a book I would look forward to each month it would come out. So you mentioned the web. Um, one of the sites that I go to often is www.comicbookgalaxy.com. And they really spotlight independent books, and sometimes even more independent than what we're talking about here. Um, 
they get a little bit too negative, I think, on DC and Marvel and superhero books in general. I think they, mm-hmm. you know, so and they they get a little abrasive when they when they like they totally ripped apart Identity Crisis and DC Countdown and you know so you got to kind of just go past that and let them have their rant. But they love James Kolchaka. I guess that's his name. He Chaka. Does, Cole Chaka. Oh, I thought you were talking about no. Land of the Lost. No, Chaka. 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 He does um, um, the monk, the sock monkey. Sock monkey. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah, sock, sock monkey. monkey. Yeah. Um, and he does some other stuff, Tony too. Tony Millionaire. Oh, no, that's Tony Millionaire. You're right. So who's James? Uh, go to the sure. website and figure it out. Rick, do your research. <laughs> yeah, you should do your research. Um, I know. I'm sorry. Um, he also, there also was one currently out. Whoosh, right out yeah, the window. Right. Called Street Angel. There's this little ten, uh, like 12, 13, 14 year old girl who rides a skateboard and she like gets involved with like mob stuff and she's like part mm-hmm. superhero, part rebel. It's really kind of funny. But um, he really, they really spotlight a lot of the indie books, so I wanted to give them a shout out. Hey, we she, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, did you ever read the uh, Star Child comics? Yes, I know Scott James uh, James Owens. James Owens, That's wrote right, that. yeah. And he hasn't done anything for a while no. now, as far as I know. I wish I knew no, what but was, it was going on. It was fabulous yes, artwork. It was, it was really a was. great story. Yeah. And uh, one that's that's a high. I'd highly recommend that. Yeah. The one trade, trade is called Awakenings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, yeah. If you can find that, get it. You even though he's not publishing anything anymore, it's worth. Mm-hmm. It. And that's like, that's a lot of issues in that Awakenings. I think it's like. 15 or more issues. Yeah, I was, I was thinking 20. Yeah, it's, I think it might be 20. I think Cause cause it's, it's he, thick. He took uh, his ideas from like the Cerebus trade paperbacks. He made them like phone book size yeah. trade paperbacks. Yeah, it was well worth it. And we haven't even really hit any of the goth, some of your, your the old time favorite goth stuff, like, you know, Crow, uh, James yeah. O'Barr. That was, I love that. The original Crow, the three issue, well, um, it was a five issue miniseries and they condensed it to a like three issue prestige format. And I actually remember getting those. Mm. And uh, you know, for, uh, that was one of my favorite, favorite you know, independent comics. Actually, comics of all time. But I mean, it had, to me, it, it's kind of lost its like appeal now since it kind of got perverted through the movie and the series. And, mm. and there's then, another movie coming out too. Really? Was that like a li- like was that part of like uh, the comics that were like black and white and they were like really violent? Like, oh yeah, that, that, like, that was a. Like, Remember the all time Azazel? <laughs> Faust. Faust, yes. Faust, yeah, no. Faust and yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> seven. They stop making me. He's probably he's listening. All right. he's probably yeah. listening. Well, Rob's cool. Rob, I, I took, I I took art that. lessons from Rob for a long oh, time. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I know Faust was, Another yeah. friend of ours who wrote a comic, mm-hmm. Azazel. But I remember uh, reading The Crow, and it was so neat because he had you know, poetry, his own poetry, like within the comic book. You know, you would get to a section, and it would you know, kind of stop the action and the story, and we just have some poetry written. Wait, how. how how much do they hate Neil Gaiman? Do you think a lot of those like ones that did like the more violent ones, but also they tried to make it like high art and they tried to put the poet like you're saying because Why would they here it? comes well because here comes Neil Gaiman who is really about fantasy and, and liter- literature. You know what I mean? Like he's really delving kind of into that same world, and all those goth girls just went right to Sandman. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, like took all their customers uh-huh. away. They probably hit him. I don't know. I'm generalizing, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, and and. I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were done. Um, and then just two others um, right now. I know um, our big uh, John and the Homicidal Maniac. Uh, mm-hmm. What was it? Yeah, Pete the Postal. John and Vasquez or whatever. Pissed off the work. Yeah. And uh, Squee. A lot. Of, a lot of that stuff. I mean, I've, I've, hey, I've, I've read it, and it's not totally my cup of tea. I, I understand where you're coming from, but um, those are very big, and, and when we were, I was working at the store, man, we couldn't keep that book on mm-hmm. the shelf. And we, you know, we get two copies in, boom! As soon as we got them in, they were gone. And uh, so that, you know, that brought some of the girls in. And Independence, I think, honestly, I believe brings more of the women into the stores. You'll see them go towards that uh, that section, and we'll look. I mean, and unfortunately, for a little while, there was the crap uh you know your bad girl artwork Vampirella. garbage and i'm sorry it was garbage I, uh, lady death uh, nobody lady can death. nobody can tell me that anywhere in 20 years anybody's going to be going back to those books and saying oh my god look look at what they did he had started some half decent careers i will say you know jim ballant had a career doing that kind of stuff and there was <laughs> some other drawing big boobs <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> but um but that that was that was garbage oh, you know i'm what? sorry that that reminds me. Uh, we talked um, last episode about uh, 
Lena Taylor's uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, the future Mrs. Uh, Jamie, <laughs> the future Mrs. Uh, Mrs. She Rios. was she was uh, talking about future would be girl. Other fighting Simonis. over her already. She's gonna be so embarrassed. Uh, one well, of actually, the, uh, I'm gonna be embarrassed when I finally meet her. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna be so um, She was talking about independent books. She was saying how um, somebody from Top Cow sent her a title. Uh, she said she thinks it was Strike Force Volume Two, Number One. They wanted her to review it. And no, send us stuff, Jesus Christ! Well, this was before she's involved in some literary society oh, okay. or something. Right, right. And uh, what a literary society wants. She said so. Question. She imagined a conversation between writer and artist uh, when they conceived this Strike Force Volume mm-hmm. Two. So, it's writer. Okay, those are the male characters. Now we need some women artists. Yeah, do they have to wear clothes? Writer. <laughs> hmm. We need to give them superpowers, and they can't be fat or ugly. Let's see. One can be like a martial arts chick and have swords. Artist. Great. Drawing women with knives is cool. You can pose them like Barbies. Writer. And the others. Wait, get this. The other one will be invisible. Why is that great? Sue Storm was invisible and she wasn't so hot. She was when Kirby drew her. Listen, you know how when people are invisible, their clothes are invisible too? And, like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, this time, it will make sense because artist and writer together. She'll be naked. Yeehaw! Artist, this is like a dream come true. Let's make her blonde. Writer, with pigtails. Artist, and a lollipop. Here, what do you think? Writer, wow, that's really great. Wait, I'll be right back. Ten minutes later. Sorry, like I was saying. That's so cool. (laughs) She's like young and nubile and totally unthreatening, even if she is a superhero. Artist, here, this is the other one. The The not blonde. Writer. Make her tits bigger. Artist, there. Writer, bigger. Artist, there. Writer, bigger. Artist, there. Writer, no, too big. Go down one cup size. That's better. And make her skinnier. She should look like a broomstick with soccer balls. And make her outfit skimpier. She should be essentially naked. Artist, high heels. Writer, of course. Artist, how's that? I made her tits and ass be right up front, even though there's no reason to focus on them. Uh, Writer, that's really, really... Wait, I'll be right back. (laughs) Fifteen minutes later. Writer, sorry, these are excellent. So you rock, dude. No one draws tits like you. Artist, thanks. Do we have a plot? Writer, who cares? We have naked girls and explosions. Yeah. That basically sums up like a whole genre yes. comes oh, there yeah. for a little bit. Like was Lady Death. A whole, a whole mess of image in yeah. the 90s were yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Oh, my God, thank you. I haven't laughed like that all day. <laughs> That's oh, great. Jesus. So that, that, that ties right into the whole Heck independent yeah. thing we're talking about and chicks, why chicks like yes. comics and why they don't necessarily like some superhero comics. And mm-hmm. If you're a girl out there and you want to read a good comic, uh, maybe you don't know about it, www.secondtosomestudios.com um, put out a book called Fade, Fade from Blue. And um, uh, I, I got number one at one of the Wizard World Phillies one time. They were handing it out for free. For free. And um, I read it. It's black and white, and it's about these four sisters. I talked about it before. Four sisters who meet each other, didn't know they existed. You know, they had the same father, although they didn't know that. And there's a, there's a reason behind it, and there's a story behind it. They are all four, four girls, four women that, you know, you would meet in real life. They're not superhero Barbie dolls. And it's such a good story, and they just finished the 10-issue story. Yep. Um, and you can get all of them from their website. There is a trade. I think it collects the first five issues, I think. It's five or six. Yeah. Um, but go to Second to Some Studios, and you'll find it. They also put out another book called Two Over Ten, which is going to be a movie soon, actually. Oh, that's a step yeah. up, huh? How about so that? they got the rights for that to be a movie. Uh, and it's about uh, something about – I've read it. Everybody well, has now. a superhero. Everybody has a superpower or a mutant power. Right. They just don't know it. And it could be the, the lamest thing of like you know, if a door is locked, you can always open it. You know what I mean? Something sim- something like that. Up to explosions. You know. So um, that's a that's a a company that I I always wanted to give a shout out to. The other one is Slave Labor Graphics. They put out a group uh, a book called uh, and I talked about this before as well. Even Fall by Pete Staffis. Very personal story. Um, also black and white. I think he basically is getting ready to wrap up that series as well. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get to talk to him soon. Um, they're just, you know, they're great reads. They're different. They're not superhero books. They have great dialogue and they have heart to it. And just like a lot of these other indie books do. Yeah, I, I 
blame Pete for making me shell out like fifty dollars. <laughs> but I picked up um, just from talking to the guys uh, at uh, Wizard World two years ago. Um, they had like a show special where if you bought the trade, if you actually you bought the, the the fade from blue trade, all the rest of the issues up to number nine, mm-hmm. and the other graphic novel, they like it was like regularly billing like seventy five bucks. They said fifty bucks, and I figured for all that I had talked to them. I had gotten a feel for the comic. They pretty much said that they loved the guy who wrote it. Loved Strangers in Paradise, which to me is you know he said he wishes his book was as good as that one, but that's what he was striving for. I picked it up and I I totally enjoyed it and I totally joined Pete in saying, go dig those out, find them, go to their website. Right. They're they're definitely creators that are worth uh, are worth uh, your money. It's they Myatt, really are. Myatt Murphy and Scott Dalrymple, and they were Eisner nominated for talent deserving of wider recognition. Yeah, and they, so. def- they definitely are. Uh, the, art, yeah. the artwork is really good. It is good. Me. You know, I, I'm not a fan of black and white artwork, mm-hmm. and when I opened that up, I went, wow, that's really nice. It's not – it's very detailed. You know, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not realistic in a sense. It does have a slight comic booky feel to it, but it's, it's really good, and the storytelling – is very good with the art. The storytelling is a little choppy at times, but I could see as he went, he got better at mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And I also I read the trade, and the trade didn't have the notes in the front that like the books from Seven on had. So I think if I had gone and gotten the actual books, I might have been able to follow the story just a little bit better. Right. But it's still worth a read. I mean, I, I just finished, like he said, number ten just came out. And now you'll at least be able to finish it without having to wait, I guess, the year we had to wait yeah, yeah. between number nine and number ten coming out. So, uh, Another – this is more recent than I have on my list uh, that's really good is Nevermen. Dark Horse published two three-issue miniseries, and hopefully someday there will be a third. It's by Phil Amara, uh, is, writes it, and Guy Davis illustrates it. And it was really, really cool. It's like this funky, you know, just – cool universe where there are these guys who are called the Nevermen and they protect the city from evil and the evil there's all these mad geniuses building like these funky robot things and stuff it's it's very very cool so I recommend that I think you can get both of them are traded now so Guy, Guy Davis is definitely an artist good I, artist I really like yeah absolutely can I tell my little should I tell my little birth call story now go ahead <laughs> it's it's Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell who did the fabulous From Hell which Alex was going to talk about they have out in the phone book trade and whatever you you know if you saw the movie there's that's like one percent of the story not even not even yeah um so i got uh, from hell because of alex and john's recommendation and um our friend john and um they put out this other thing called birth call and what a birth call is is when a baby's born they sometimes they have like a a film over their face from the placenta and they're born with that, and it's supposed to be like you know, good luck, and I'm sure there's other kind of stories behind it. And I, Alan Moore was born with that, so he wrote this story. That's you know, it's it's autobiographical basically, and it also was a performance piece that he did over in over in London or Europe or wherever. And it was told backwards. It's 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 like you start at 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 your I don't know, like late in your life, and it and it progresses backwards. Uh, to where to where you're born, and I thought, okay, let me start reading. It's just a one shot. It's like you know, forty, I don't know, sixty pages or whatever. It's like twelve in the morning, one in the morning. I'm like, let me, I'll read about a couple pages. Well, I read it all, and I, it was like by the time I was done, it was like three o'clock. You know, it literally took that long because I was really studying it. And there were certain parts in it that really hit me, especially concerning adolescence and your teen years. Oh, and your phone rang. <laughs> Brian's phone rang. Yes. <laughs> Because he's always yelling at us. Uh, <laughs> Guilty. Don't. So, and he didn't even answer it. How cool is that? So um, I should have. It's my buddy who works for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's oh. probably trying to hook me up with something. Yeah, right. Tickets or cheerleaders. So I, I get to that section, and they start talking about like how when you're a teen, you know, you really try to like keep like everything in your life, like all your mementos and all your programs and all your letters from people and things like that. You know what I mean? Like you really hold on to that. And he talks about – and since you're reading it backwards, you found out early in the book he throws away all this stuff, and then you find out what it is later. And I, something about that hit me and hit me hard. Like I, it was 3 o'clock in the morning, so maybe that's what it was. But I 
finished the book, put it down, went into my closet, and threw away three trash bags full of journals, show memorabilia, letters from girlfriends, all this stuff. Because I, I, I guess I was either in college or out of college by that time, so I, I was feeling a need to, to purge any, anyway, and that book just made me do that and i did literally three bags of junk old shirts that you keep around you know forever and ever so i talked to john and i talked to alex i'm like yeah this book changed my life and at the mo- at that moment you know and, and i now rush told me to read it and nothing <laughs> <laughs> i got nothing from it it was a nothing. very good book but i had no I, I yeah i could not understand what moved you know peter I, I so get much it. but i don't you know it's one of those things just one of those things where a book you know just i was it was at that right moment you know what i mean like we talk about Lost in Translation, the movie. Mm-hmm. I've seen it three times. The awesome first two movie. times, well, the first two times, I was like, "What's the big deal? I don't get it." I'm sitting there with my ex at the time. We're watching. I fall asleep both times at the same part, and I'm like, "I don't get it." The third time I watched it, I was by myself. I was kind of feel, you know, mellow or whatever, and I was, you know, I said, "Let me." It was on. I, I watched it. I got it. I finally got it. I think because I was in, of course, you know, it was after the big yeah, breakup. The breakup. And, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> after the key. all the mess. Yeah, and, yeah. So, of course, I was in the right frame of mind for it. But So, if you ever read it, somebody out there, if you've ever read Birth Call and you had some kind of affinity for it, let me know because I, I, I have to have validation. <laughs> um. Yes. Uh, Dead yes, Silence. Yes, Dead yes. Silence. Uh, Quantum my, and Woody. <laughs> <laughs> no. Somebody um, said Quantum and Woody earlier. That's earlier. a great book. Uh, From Hell uh, was one of those books that I could not – I mean, it was very – I thought it was one of the most well-done books ever done. I mean, just the amount of it's work that those two p- creators put into that book. Um, I mean... It's a story of Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Right? It's like his version of what Oliver Stone did mm-hmm. to it was like, Yeah, it was like... Yeah. His, actually, it was like a melodrama. Like, yeah. I mean, there were some really bizarre like twists and turns. And it was basically he took um, the Jack the Ripper killings and kind of like added some like supernatural elements to the it and some, yeah the, well yeah. yeah and just like put some conspiracy theorists in it and he yeah. did it and he kind of like wrapped it up all together like he didn't leave any loose ends i mean at the end of each issue and or uh, yeah at the end of each issue there was he did an appendix where he he either told you like where i got like every panel he described like you know i got this information from you know actual uh jack the ripper you know hmm. forensic evidence okay or they guys have forensic but evidence right. okay this this stuff i made up um like it, it was just so well done i mean eddie campbell actually went to england into the the area of Whitechapel and you know, studied the went, went to like the hall of records and studied what the roads looked like mm-hmm. back then so he could draw them just like they were back then i mean that, that's how much work these guys put into it and i mean i, I can't think of any other book that's you know two people went to that extent to to to, to you know create and I it was just it was a very cool take on the whole thing and mm-hmm. I and yeah. I've I've been to London twice and I and both times I actually went on the Jack the Ripper walk where you can go around and uh, one time I was lucky enough to get uh, there's a guy named Donald Rumbelow who's supposedly the the world's most foremost uh, Ripperologist he knows the most about jack the ripper more than anybody he runs the jack the ripper museum and all this kind of stuff or he used to anyway or whatever um and it's freaky i mean mm-hmm. you're walking around and he takes you on the exact one time we're standing there you know you, you walk and then he and you stop and he talks and you walk and he stops and he talks and one time we stopped and we were my cousin i was with my cousin we were right up front and uh he says and right where this young lady is standing is exactly where they found the third body or whatever and she's like Whoa. you know we were just like it was creepy and you're walking and some of the spots have been you know the buildings are torn down there's new buildings but some of them the original buildings are still there so like the doorway where there was the chalk writing and then they washed it away and they mm-hmm. found a bloody rag or whatever it's like we looked at that doorway you know that's right there and and the whole area is still a pretty seedy area it's not really a very good section of town just like it was back then and so it's like this is kind of creepy. And then when I was reading that, I had already gone on the walk after I had, you know, before I read that, and I was like, wow, this is, it was wild. The whole Jack the Ripper yeah. thing is pretty, pretty mm-hmm. cool. I, I also, mean, not cool, but you know, it's right. very intriguing and m- m- mysterious. I liked right. the whole thing where he did about London and why it was designed the way they, were, certain buildings, certain mm-hmm. monuments that they brought from Egypt and things like. That. Well, I would the, love to the hear. Obelisks were placed there by, um, I guess, this certain certain Hawks, architect to like. What the heck was it? Hawksmoor, yeah. Hawksmoor, yeah. And um, 
I guess it was supposed to like channel some kind of like energy and the ley lines and all that. Yeah, yeah it was really yeah. bizarre. I mean, it. I'm not giving it justice by my ramble here, but oh, I mean, it was so so good. It was Murph, so good. Murph and Eggers, if you're listening, you need to give us like <laughs> what you're since you're yes. part of that whole thing. You know, you need to give us your view mm-hmm. on Jack the Ripper and London, and I would love. They're to probably hear so it. bored with it. But I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I want to hear bloody it. Bloody tourists. <laughs> well, in it is the. It is. It's fascinating, though. Mm-hmm. Grant Morrison talks about it in Invisibles, uh, and I know I'm I'm going to DC. I'm sorry, um, but he talks about something about Canary, the, the building Canary Wharf, or, or on the Canary Wharf, or something like that. That it's like a really tall building, and it's supposed to intersect with ley lines and all this kind of crazy mm-hmm. stuff. And I was always like, "Wow, what is that? I, w- I want to know what that is." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. We're gonna stray from uh, Independence here for sure. a second ah. for the Stump the Rios. <laughs> Time and retreat dance. So I don't have any quarters on me right now, but we'll have to just keep a record if I get any wrong. Yeah, you might need them for this one too. Oh no. All right. Um, this one is from uh, a listener, Drew. Drew J. Uh, he says, I'm a relatively new listener to your podcast. Actually, your podcast was the first podcast I ever listened to, and I'm impressed. I'm a huge comic geek myself. I've been reading since I was 12 or so, and I'm now 23. I'm not from anywhere particular interesting, so I'm afraid I won't be able to help you out in your global <laughs> domination scheme. I'm from Saverna Park, Maryland. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I love your podcast and the energy everyone brings to the show. There's a little too much DC talk for my taste. I'm a zar- Marvel zombie myself. But then again, I haven't listened to all the podcasts, so maybe it just seems this way to me. Um, yeah, we've been kind of DC heavy these past couple of episodes. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of irritating me. But anyway. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So, question number one. When Archon first shows up in Avengers 75 and 76, who does he kidnap with the intent of marrying? Oh, I know this. Avengers 75 and 76. Yes. Um... Wonder does Jamie know the answer? Yeah, to that? Oh, I do, I do know this because I read that that recent Kurt Busiek, uh, J, or I read the JLA Avengers, and I was doing annotations, and I mentioned Arcot. Who did he kidnap? Um, uh, what's my old cat? I'm trying to remember these was it Mantis. Damn it! <laughs> it's, it's buzzing and tickling in the back of my brain, and I'm just. Uh, Trying to picture these, I'm going to say Scarlet Witch. That is correct. Woo! So is Scarlet Witch. Pulled pulled mm-hmm. that out. All right. What does that Avenger keep as a memento of that time? So what does Scarlet Witch keep as a memento? Um, I don't know. I'll just take a guess. Uh, one of his Thunderbolt weapons. No, it was a flower that she picked from the world. Oh. I guess where he took her. Or whatever. Polum Polumacus is the world. Something like that. Wow, he doesn't even have that written down. Yeah. <laughs> was that his second question? That was the second question. Okay, so I got that wrong. 25 cents. Question number three. When Archon returns almost ten issues later in, ni- in number 84, who actually is his wife? Thundra. And the nope. Enchantress. Oh. How about that? So you got yeah. two wrong. We got 50 cents for the actor fund there. <laughs> uh, comic book legal defense fund. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, yeah, that's what he suggested. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought, we, yeah, we you're right. Whatever, you're right. But no, 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 they, no. That's right. Comic book. That's fine. Or we get split it or whatever. Who knows? Whatever. <laughs> just as long as we don't have to. So he. So that Viva Vendetta trade is still out there. So that's right. Yeah, you just yeah. Uh, sneaked by with that. Do you one. have other ones? I mean, do we want to do another one? Just in. I don't know. I, I think I'm going to save them for oh, okay. Because you know, just because we're going to get a lot of them. That's what the reason. Well, I'm... if we start to if we continue if we continue to get a lot of them, we might start doing two a show. But for now, I'll okay, keep fine. the backlog in case we have a little drought. You know. Thank look, God. look how cocky he is. He gets one right, and he's like, hey, "Give me another one. I <laughs> want right. another Hit one. Hit me again." <laughs> I know. It's not, three wrong it's not like I want to okay. give away this trade. You know? <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. Is it your trade you're giving away? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's not mine, right? Because I have one. You didn't like sneak into my house and. No. So. No, we're giving yes. away Star Blazer stuff next week. <laughs> <laughs> not even funny. Not even remotely funny. Michelle said, get rid of this stuff. So that's <laughs> what we have doing. a whole box of, of. It's going to the first person to send us five bucks. <laughs> get out. <laughs> <laughs> From my cold, dead hand. Uh, any other independent comics? Yeah, that I have a want? couple I want to talk about. Besides well, I don't from really hell. care. So I'm in, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the, the newbie Brad, taking the, over. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brad Pack and uh, Max Immortal are two really uh, 
neat stories um, by Rick Veach. Rhymes with Beach. Um, uh, the Max Immortals basically Alex's super. Alex's second favorite after Alan Moore, right? <laughs> basically, yeah, it was one, one of my favorites. Um, he, Max Immortals basically Superman, okay, like the character Superman, and uh, you know it's like a uh, like a weird twist on you know what would a guy like that do in a world where you know he could touch someone and kill them by accident. He was more like a golden age Superman, and uh, mm. it's kind of interesting. The guys like goes insane because of his powers and uh, what he can do and it's just it's, it's a real interesting take on the superman like mythos or archetype and uh brad pack is a bunch of uh, s the story of these you know sidekicks to um like archetypes like batman wonder woman um you know, superman and uh, one other one i can't recall but it's, it's a really interesting uh take on you know the, the lives of these sidekicks you know what they had to deal with oh the other one's uh like a green arrow um, uh, archetype, and uh, you know they they have their these like issues like the um, uh, well first of all let, let me <laughs> wake up Alex <laughs> I think he just fell asleep <laughs> <laughs> no the um, the, you know, the the Batman Robin duo are kind of like you know the whole like lover thing going um, the Wonder Woman sidekick uh, she she was used often to be uh, baited to you know get and so she's you know a couple times she you know got like it just it's really interesting dark 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 stuff like um people who liked watchmen would will, like dig this people who like uh um the crow porn porn well no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what's the yeah. book did he also do the one something the one, the one yeah, yeah that's like actually a, like an epic from epic and oh, okay. uh, that that was real interesting um I he did a pretty good run after Alan Moore on the Swamp, Swamp Thing. Thing. Yeah, that's where, that's where I basically picked. And up. he started the. Well, we can't talk about DC. Sorry. Mm. But um, well, what did he start? He, he started the current Aquaman series. Yeah, okay. he was like the first mm -hmm. writer on that. Yep. Um, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> looking at looking at my notes. Okay. Oh, and, uh, I thought floor. he was staring at the ground. I'm <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> Alex got a little condition. He's got to like. <laughs> and uh, Eddie Campbell's Bacchus. Uh, he uh, just it's a good read. Just go ahead and pick it up. Okay. Bacchus as in the Greek god of exactly of yeah. revelry. Yeah, uh, it's it's a really interesting take on uh, uh, Greek gods that are still around today. They're obviously not as powerful as we once were. Um, but isn't Bacchus the Roman name? Oh uh, yeah, it is. But it's still a Greek god. I guess Blasphemy. he didn't like. I hate that. <laughs> I hate when they mix. The yeah. Greek in the row. That's just my own little pet mm -hmm. peeve thing. I can never tell them the part, so I don't. You know, I can. Yeah, the Greek was Dionysius, is right, the Greek version, right. and uh, Bacchus is the Roman. But uh, it's an interesting book. Uh, it's about cool. 64 issues. It's very, wow. you know, same continuity, kind of like the whole Cerebus thing. It's, you know, it's a very interesting book. I have another. The last thing on my list is the entire ABC line. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, part of DC, but not really. It didn't start that way. It didn't no. start that way, right. and now it's not anymore. <laughs> so. But all that stuff is good stuff. Also, 1963, yep. remember that? Oh, I remember that. Those Image. Actually, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Could that count? That was fun. It's funny how you know, a lot of things that we mention are superhero-related, even though we would like to try to uh, stay away from right. superheroes. Well, what, what about Martha Washington? Anybody read the Give Me Liberty trade? I have mm -hmm. the issues, but I never read them yet. I, I read most all of that. Yeah. Uh, another one uh, I liked from that, uh, that uh, from Dark Horse Legends was... Um, Paul Chadwick's Concrete, Concrete, which is a very good, interesting um, series about a, a guy, a guy who basically uh, runs across a UFO and gets trapped in a giant suit, and what your life would be like if this would happen to you. You just can't get out of it, hmm. and it's it's a really really good series, really well written and well drawn. Kind of sounds like Blue Devil. <laughs> yeah. hey, we Going back to DC. <laughs> Sorry, the Martha Washington one. Just not doing is uh, Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons, Dave Gibbons. and um, it's this Watchman post. -oc Going back to DC. Yeah. <laughs> what was that thing with Jeff Darrow that he? Um, it was right around that Hard same boiled. time. Hard boiled. Hard boiled yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was cool too. Yeah, who he's now doing something for uh, for Burly Man Entertainment. Uh, that Shaolin Cowboy. Oh which yeah, which is really really good. Absolutely hilarious oh, second issue. Rusty the, go ahead. The Rusty the Boy Robot wasn't that by Daro? I think so. It might have been. That was actually a cartoon Darrow. for a little bit too. Yeah. Right? Yep. And then another thing that we've talked about before that's really good uh, that was part of the um, Dark Horse Legends line was Next Men. 
Yeah. It was great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good jumbo. And if you can find those issues in the 50 cent bin or whatever, well pick it. them up. They're they're fantastic. Yep. It's also, Sin City, I mean, that's kind of like independent. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that goes without good. saying. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, I'll have to do a little more research on like some really severe independents that aren't by, you know, big name creators, but because mm-hmm. uh, I know they're out there. And, you know, some, there's some things that are re- it's really getting. Yeah, Evan Dorkin, I, I mentioned yeah, him in passing, yeah. but oh my God, if you want to laugh, just get, you know, any of his milk and cheese hectic trades, planet. the Hectic Planet, um, just his own book called Dork. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if he, the thing with his stuff is it's like the airplane movies and the Naked Gun movies. There are so many freaking jokes that, yeah, they, all, they aren't all, you know, great, but, you know, most of them are going to stick to the wall and you're going to laugh. And that's the thing with his comic books, especially Dork. You know, you, uh, one panel you may go, oh, my God, did, did he just do that? And the next panel you'll be on the floor peeing yourself. So <laughs> it, it's, it's great stuff. So, like, I'm looking at this in the previous Speakeasy comics. There's some interesting things. You know, they look interesting, but it's like, how do you just jump in and try it? You know, yeah, so that's why I wait for those 75 cent issues just to, like, go, sometimes you know, they're even, try it. Sometimes they're hard to find. That was the thing back in the day yeah. when you're trying to find them. You know, go into the local comic book store, and if you weren't there, Right at the crack of dawn when the comic books got there, you know, they someone were else, they were gone, yeah, because yeah. they only get, like, maybe, you know, whatever, whoever subscribed to them and then one for the shelf. And then they were, they were always tough, when I was working there, they were always tough to uh, reorder. Yeah. I mean, you tried to reorder them, and it was, you know, you, you try your best to keep them on the shelf, but if Diamond didn't have them, you were SOL. Yeah. Um, I, we, we should, uh, we're going to be getting that 13 in this. I uh, know, I can't wait. Yeah, I haven't. In the shipment, yep. I haven't looked at it yet, but it's there. it's there for me. Cool. Well, I think that wraps us up for this episode. Uh, if you would like to email us, it is comicgeekspeak at gmail.com. Je- uh, check out our blog at comicgeekspeak.blogspot.com. Uh, uh, for more information about our show and all the other comic podcasts, go to the Comic Podcast Network at comicspodcast.com. Uh, send us your Geek of the Day and your Stump the Rios questions. Uh, we thank Bob at GameCircuit.net for making the uh, distribution of this show possible. Vote for us at Podcast Alley. And if you want a t-shirt, you can order one at our blog. At uh, Well, all the t-shirts are 10 bucks each. We now have four colors, pink, yellow, gray, and red. So we're really expanding our wardrobe line here. Look out, Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, anything else, guys? Nope. I think that's it. I think our next podcast will be coming to you from oh. San Diego Comic Con. Oh, no, wait. Our next podcast would probably be Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four review. Oh, yeah. Well, we might actually put the Fantastic Four review online before this one airs. Before this one airs. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we just spilled Oops. the beans. Ah, oh, whatever. Oops. Yes, maybe this one will be after San Diego. I don't even have any oh, idea we'll now. We've what, what the hell? David Letterman doesn't tape at 11 o'clock at night either, so that's come right. on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. There's uh, your indie fill. That's right. We'll bring you more later. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.